such a great pleasure to be standing in front of you. I'm so deeply moved that I may start crying of emotion, right? So please bear with me. It's crying of happiness. Um, my name is Wanda Diaz. I am from the wonderful, beautiful island of Puerto Rico, which is in the Caribbean. You're all invited to come and visit. <laughs> don't, don't come all at once. I need to make arrangements, but you're all invited to come and visit. As I'm from an island, uh, I had the benefit to be able to set out almost every evening to witness the sun sinking beneath the wave. And uh, one day, all of that grandeur, you know, when you see the, the sun uh, shimmering the skies with shimmering shades of red, orange, and blue, and yellow, I apologize, I'm too nervous. Um, one day, all of that grandeur turned off like a light. And um, today, I perceive the world in a very, very, very different way. So I want to invite you to experience the world as I do and kindly ask you to wear the blindfolds. I will give you a couple of seconds to, to wear them so you can experience the world as I do. I progressively lost my sight when I was in my late 20s. I was doing my studies in physics, and I did set my mind not to change my course. It was not easy, but I said, no, I'm not going to change my course. Many good mentors, they were there behind me saying, Wanda, you have to do it. If there is not a way, do it. My mind was trying to betray me, saying, it's going to be so hard. There's no way for you to do physics. And I said, no. I'm going to make it. So I won over my mind. Sometimes your mind is your worst obstacle. So being blind doesn't mean that I cannot still enjoy that fantastic evening spectacle. Nowadays, and supported by very, listen, very simple and free technology. As I come from a very humble family, I come from a very, very, way poor family, right? The benefit is that I grew, I am economically conscious, and I do not use any assistive technology that I have to pay for. I make it myself, and I, I make my own assistive technology, because my life depends on assistive, assistive technology. To be here with you, I depend on the technology of the cane. Why do I have to get on a mortgage to buy a cane? See? Um, so using that very simple, and completely free uh, assistive technology. Nowadays, nature feels, it feels as if, as if all nature serenades with a mystic melody. And then it gets better, the spectacle gets better as I hear how galaxies arch across the celestial dome. What happens is that the information that the satellites gather is light. And usually, People like me, who dedicate their lives to physics and astronomy, etc., convert that light, that information gathered by the satellites, into numbers. And those numbers can be converted into a sound. And that sound can be mapped using sound parameters. So your sensitivity to events in that data or within those numbers increases. That is called the sonification of data, which is an auditory analog to data visualization. And I'm glad that you're experiencing um, the talk, as I do experience every single talk, um, to play the sounds of a very distant galaxy called AGC 7849. Mind you, it is not music, it is sound. Place close attention. Remember, it's not music. 
See if you can identify anything in the data. You were supposed to hear the bass line, and then it increasing. I failed some high pitches that you may not have failed. A little, no, not high, very high pitches, but some pitches that changed, right? Those pitches, as it changes, the higher pitches and the, lower, the lowest pitches, it indicates you when the amount of hydrogen is changing in the, in the galaxy. The amount of a hydrogen detected by the, by the telescope. So high pitches indicate a very, um, a, very, a very high intensity of hydrogen, and low pitches would have indicated you very low um, intensities of, of hydrogen. And sometimes you can even do calculations, calculate parameters of the galaxy by, by listening to, to those sounds. So then it is all about how we use our senses to identify events either in the real world or when we approach this kind of, of data sets. It is about perception. Regularly sighted people, they will perceive the world using mainly their eyes. And I'm saying mainly, I'm not saying only, I'm saying mainly their eyes. And blind people will perceive the world using the other four senses. But what is color? I don't know if you have ever wondered. It is a visual phenomena. What is color? Can I hear a color? That brings me back to my childhood when I was sighted, and I felt that urge to run to the, to the rainbow, just to be immersed in the palette of colors, like, like magic, all of those colors surrounding me. I didn't care about the pot with the gold coins. Now I care. But at that moment, my only care was to be immersed in the palette of colors. Later, during my physics studies, um, I was able to learn that white light is all of those rainbow, ver those rainbow colors combined. And then I learned more. I learned that white light is a very short range in something that we call the electromagnetic spectrum. And that white light is the name we give to what the human eye sees. When all the colors that are in the visible electromagnetic spectrum, that small range, are combined. So then there's much more to light than visible light. There's invisible light. I also learned things, and I'm sorry I'm a physicist, I have to tell you this. If not, I wouldn't be me. Then I learned with time that, um, eh, some of the, eh, that all of those um, ranges in the electromagnetic spectrum are characterized by things that are frequencies, wavelengths, among others that you can measure them. Um, I want you to listen to the tones that characterize the wavelength corresponding to the seven colors in the visual spectra. Those are red, orange, yellow, green. What is the other one? Blue, indigo, and violet. And also we're going to, to listen to infrared, which you cannot see, and ultraviolet. You would have been able to listen to the whole electromagnetic spectrum if I would have played all of those um, tones. I'm so thankful to, scientists, to the scientists that um, pass light or shown pass, ah, oh, that, that word is so difficult for me, shown, yes. Shown light through a prism. And um, it sounds like other things in Spanish, which is a bad word, and I reject <laughs> to say it. So I'm really um, thankful to those scientists who shone light through a prism and um, discovered that the infrared light other scientists could not see could make other things hot. Once it is measured, I can convert it into a sound. And it's something that I can relate to it and I can study. I hope I can one day convert it into a tactile form so I can use two senses to relate to my, to my data. Now, uh, I want you to listen 
to something we call a sunburst. It's a sudden emission of energy from the sun, and it has been detected. This one was detected by, by a radio telescope that we call the Radio Jove. It's a very cheap radio telescope. Remember, I'm economically conscious. It's a very cheap radio telescope, and you can build this radio telescope in your schools to monitor emissions from the sun and planetary emissions from Jupiter. Solar 1.WAF. You're listening to the baseline. This is the flow of energy detected by, by the antenna. Detected, detected the burst, right? It's in, it's in the ground, it's in a, it was in the backyard of, um, of a school. Detected the burst, and then converted the data into the audible domain. That is called a direct translation of a data waveform to the audible, audible domain. It's different from sonification, where you're using sound parameters to increase your sensitivity to the data. In this case, it's called audification of the data. It's for reasons of monitoring and comprehension. Um, the work I'm doing now with uh, the, Office of, the Office of Astronomy for Development of the International Astronomical Union, by using sound in order to analyze or approach these kinds of uh, data sets, promises to level the field for the sighted and the visually impaired. Perhaps by using other senses, humanity will get to get a sense or understand that um, anyone or everyone can contribute to human knowledge, regardless of any distinction, that the only thing you have to do is to set your mind to it. Um, I want you to listen now to data from the Advanced Composition Explorer satellite. This is magnetic fluctuation data from one of the experiments in the Advanced Composition Explorer satellite. And I hope, I really hope, you will get to listen to the changes in pitches to which I have mapped this data for your benefit. When I listen to the data, I listen to it in a much, much, much slower tempo. So I can get a better sense of the data and I can relate one tone or one note to another, and I can observe with my ear how the notes are changing and the length of the notes, for, ex for example. a coronal mass ejection, which is a bubble of ionized gas traveling at, at inconceivable high speeds across, across the space within the, beneath the planets, or beneath, be, within the planets. What happens is that you heard as the shock passed the satellite. See, you heard the pitches going up and down, so that's the shock passing, passing the satellite. When I began in, um, in astronomy, I didn't know that I would do radio astronomy or astrophysics or high energy physics. I didn't know that. I was doing physics and I was losing my sight. Actually, the sunburst that you heard, uh, that we heard the, the baseline and then increasing and decreasing, was my very first sunburst and was that took me into astronomy. I came to astronomy because I lost my sight. I don't want you to ever give up if there's not a way created. 
Do not allow your mind to discourage you. If your mind is telling you it's too hard, don't wake up from bed, don't get in love with your bed. Don't get in love with that thought. Wake up from that bed, go out and make a difference. Read a lot, seek for very good mentors. I would not be a good mentee if I don't tell you that the difference is your mind. Nothing is stronger than your, than your determination. Thank you. Thank you, Westerford. Thank you.